Are you sick of seeing AI takes? Well, here's another one. I know what this video is about, but trust me, I do have something new to say about this whole thing. There are two contradictory takes about the role of AI in software engineering that I keep seeing. One take is that LLM tools like Copilot and full project generators are the future of software development, resulting in a massive labor contraction in the tech industry. The opposing side claims that code generators produce so many bugs that the debugging process alone takes just as long, if not longer, than the development process would have taken in the first place. Both of these takes are correct. And no, this isn't a quantum physics conundrum where two states can exist simultaneously, they are simply two accurate observations of how LLMs perform in different software engineering scenarios. When has software development ever been a monolith? Of course different developers have different takes on the efficacy of LLMs, they work in different parts of the industry. What's more, I believe these two experiences are split along the classic software engineering split, front-end and back-end. The best demos of LLMs generating full projects show the creation of front-end web code. The worst ones involve generating backend code. The most crucial thing about training LLMs is that they need data. Insane, humongous, unprecedented amounts of data. Often more data than LLM engineers can get their hands on legally. Luckily for LLM peddlers, front-end web code is plentiful and easy to access. While not technically open source, the vast majority of front-end web code is unobfuscated plain text. Even better, web code adheres to structures that are easy to parse by computers because they were specifically made to be easy to parse by computers. Computers. Front end web code is written in a very small handful of languages. Usually, it's the tried and true trifecta of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. After all, there's a reason why chatbots only speak the most popular languages. Once again, it comes back to the amount of training data available. Languages, both natural and programming ones, are different enough that for each language that an LLM supports, it needs to be fed a critical mass of data in each of those languages. The fewer languages you need to support for your LLM's use case, the better. Another factor that can enhance the quality of LLM data is the the amount of examples included per use case. The more examples an LLM is fed for a specific scenario, the better it can respond to prompts mentioning that scenario. For example, there's an innumerable amount of business websites with an about a section in a contact form, so the more of those are fed into a code generating LLM, the better result when the LLM is asked to create such a website. Lastly, front-end web code that is used to render actual websites is by definition production grade. The old adage of garbage in garbage out holds true for LLMs just as it does for all software. Training data has to be graded and filtered for quality so that the resulting LLM produces acceptable prompt responses. To start with, the most popular websites have production grade front end code because if they weren't, they wouldn't have, and if they didn't have, they wouldn't be. When trawling for data, all an LLM developer has to do is starting from the most popular websites online and go down the list from there. The same techniques that search engines use to rank results can also lead LLM data hunters to production grade front end web code. Back end is an LLM developer's worst nightmare, as it exhibits the opposite characteristics in every way you could possibly imagine. First and foremost, we have the amount of training data. Front-end web code is freely available to all. Uncompiled back-end code rarely ever gets given to the public. It's so rare that when it does, it makes the news. LLM developers are by and large reliant on true open source availability of back-end code, which is spotty to say the least. Open source back-end business logic code isn't profitable by its own accord, because if it were, it wouldn't be open source. The Linux kernel is not profitable on its own, the applications that it powers are. Most open source projects exist either because businesses either pool their resources into commonly used projects, or because developers want to be seen contributing into open source for their CV. Neither businesses nor individuals open source profitable code. Open source is not communism. It exists so businesses don't have to reinvent the wheel constantly. It is a cost-saving measure. Projects that exist in the murky gray area between common tools and specific business cases often also oscillate between opening and closing their source. Think Redis, Akka, Winamp as recent examples. All of this obviously hurts the quantity of data available for training LLMs, but it also indirectly affects the quality of data. Most individual open source contributors are looking to pass the time or get hired. They are not looking to change the world. As any open source contributor who wants to look for an easy project to contribute to can attest, quality isn't a given when it comes to open source. I recently looked at a gaming server project written in Go that utilized the WebSockets. Each socket was stored in a user connection struct along with a locked control access. I mean, 
I know web sockets are a nightmare, but if you're going to use them, at least try and go for a decent implementation with middleman threads. Game developers aren't going to look at one of those projects to plug into their game. They will either create an in-house solution or buy a solution from a for-profit company. The result for LLMs is the same. The good solutions are not open source. How do you begin to filter out for quality in the back end? Notoriously, all code metrics are useless because when devs learn about a certain metric, they immediately abuse it to look like they're good developers. For front-end, you can fall back on user popularity and use that as heuristic, but the corresponding back-ends to those same front-ends are nearly all closed source. Hell, you can't even filter training data by compilable code. What are you gonna do? Trust that random people's main branches are actually ready for prime time, free of bugs and vulnerabilities, intentional or otherwise for the latter? Don't make me laugh. There are some good systems projects available as open source, but there's exceedingly few examples for every possible use case as maintenance efforts have coalesced into very few projects. If you want to create an LLM that provides recipes with beef, there's thousands and thousands of pre-existing examples out there that can be used as training data. In comparison, in the open source space, there are two fully-fledged operating systems, a couple code versioning systems, and one container orchestration tool. If I ask an LLM for a Kubernetes alternative, it will give me a broken implementation due to lack of training data at worst, and a slightly refactored version of Kubernetes at best. As front-end uses JavaScript as its primary Turing complete language, back-end uses every other language in existence, but also JavaScript, because it can do back-end as well, since God has abandoned us. Languages exist on different spectrums of low-level to high-level, object-oriented to functional to dynamic, permissive to restrictive, declarative to imperative. Much worse than that, anyone can create any language language for any reason, including as a meta-statement on how difficult a programming language can be made to be. Between either having to recognize patterns across languages or understanding which patterns are appropriate for which language, the polyglot nature of backend is a nightmare for LLMs. In the front end, the structure of the code maps directly to the result. LLMs don't need to understand that they're producing a UI because if the structure works, the UI works. In the back end, practices like object-oriented programming involve patterns that are neither simple in structure nor emulate natural language. What sense could an LLM make of a project using singletons, factories, deep inspection, and was later modernized to use inversion of control? There's simply too many levels of abstraction for a piece of software reliant on large-scale probabilistic math. Abstraction requires a coder to conceptualize a project holistically and at a higher order of thinking. To some degree, what's needed for the backend isn't generative AI, but general artificial intelligence. All that said, I do think LLMs threaten the front-end development industry as do megalomaniac open source stewards, but also LLMs. The openness of the web has come back to bite front-end developers in the back-end by providing endless amounts of production-grade training data for LLMs. We are now in a situation where tools exist to create fully-fledged websites in various JavaScript frameworks from simple prompts. I've seen it work, and not just in the form of cherry-picked examples that took an unknown amount of effort to create. Conversely, I'm not worried as much about my side of the industry. Generative AI models have repeatedly failed to reliably produce executable backend code. Devon was the biggest hope for a programming assistant AI, but the company behind it used a lot of smoke and mirrors in its demos. Every new ChatGPT revision comes with a pile of improvements in benchmark performance, but when it's asked to generate code for a compiled language, the few occasions when the code does compile, it's filled with bugs. My biggest worry about AI in backend development is that it fuels the classic cycle of managers over-promising. If AI leads to an X percentage point increase in productivity, but managers and executives produce a larger increase increase why, the difference is going to be shouldered entirely by developers. There is a steady churn of this happening whenever tooling upgrades threaten to make developers' lives easier. However, generative AI doesn't claim to be just another tool. Generative AI promises to do to autocomplete and code templates what the atomic bomb did to conventional ordinance. I'll be fine though. Right guys, it's not like I've been long-term unemployed since the advent of LLMs.